Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Sunday, the 16th day of January, year of our Lord, 2022. I do pray this finds you well this evening. It was very cold, uh, very cold morning this morning. It moderated a little bit, but not quite as cold right now. A nice youth group tonight. We did a uh, uh, an outing went to a, a local bowling alley. It was a lot of fun. Had a nice group of kids. Are we're very blessed and amazing with these young men and women, and uh, just a lot of fun to be around and kind of fun to get around with them and watch them bowl. I I am not a good bowler, and some of these kids are really good bowlers. Uh, we we just had a, a good time, so it was a lot of fun. I do pray for your continued support of our youth and the things we do at Emmanuel to work with our youth. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And once again, we turn to the daily lectionary, the New Testament reading, picking up where we left off last night, with St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the seventh chapter, specifically verses 1 through 20. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. What shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin... Seizing an opportunity through the commandment produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law. But when the commandment came, sin came alive, and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. That which is good and right. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not, I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me, not his, the word of the Lord. So Paul, continuing this argument, and it really comes to a beautiful conclusion um, in the end of chapter 7, which we didn't get to tonight, and the beginning of chapter 8, actually all of chapter 8. And remember, Paul didn't put in the chapter numbers and stuff like that, so these arguments um, continue throughout the book. So he talks about the purpose of the law and how, how, I mean, the law is good and holy, but yet it awakens sinners. You know, if you're a parent, you know, this, and this is a common example, I think, for many people's lives that, uh, you know, your, your, your daughter starts dating and she starts dating somebody you don't like as a parent. And there's that dilemma, you know, do I tell her not to do it, not to date that boy? Do I, you know, forbid her to not date him or do I? And there's times you need to do that. 
Uh, or do I just let her come to her own conclusions? There are times you need to, to hope, you know, you pray and you hope that they come to see light. But part of that, you know, not telling them is, well, you know, they will, you know, they'll just really want to do it then. You know, it'll be an act of rebellion and stuff like that. So, you know, so Paul's speaking in that way. He's like, okay, you know, the law, even though it's good and holy, when it says you can't do something, the sin in us, you know, says, but oh, I want to, you know, we, you know, we want to be a law unto ourself. And he, and he brings this argument to the culmination speaking of himself, you know, that the, the things that he hates, that's what he does. And the things that he desires to do, the spirit living in desires to do those he doesn't do. Um, and it continues tomorrow beautifully. And you know, what a powerful statement. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Now, he's not saying either that, you know, oh, you know, because you're going to struggle with sin every day of your life, and many days sin's going to win that, oh, just go ahead and do what you want. He's not saying that at all. And don't, don't you dare quote him in that way. He's just pointing out the depth of our fallenness, and that even the great apostle Paul struggles every day with sin. You know, and that you, you you won't stop that struggle until you die. And we, we have a Latin phrase that we use to describe that. Uh, um, simply uses that peccator. Now, for some of you listening, you know, especially if you're, um, you know, if you came out of a different confession or a completely different confession, you, you, there are confessions that teach the perfectibility of man in this life, meaning that you can continue to improve yourself to the point you're perfect in this life. And, you know, just read this section here and you realize that that's not true. And just, you know, be honest with yourself. You, you know, you know, that's not true. I mean, as I age, you know, I mean, I don't look at things the same way. And that's the desire that I now have as, as a Christian and as a pastor to do what God would have me do. But man, I don't have the ability to carry it out. I get lazy. I get selfish, just like everybody else. And I'm not excusing that. You know, it makes me sad. It makes me afraid at times too. I don't, and don't want God to be angry with me. But what Paul is building towards here is, you know, well, where's Christ in all this? And he started this section with, you know, a nod again to our death, uh, our, our, our being united to Christ's death. And if we go back to that, you know, that goes back to the beginning of Romans chapter 6. Um, you know, that um, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may no longer so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, that we may be fruit to God. So, so, you know, you, your sinful self has already been put to death in Christ. You, know, you were buried with him in baptism, you know, and you'll rise from the dead. You really do rise out of that water, out of that baptism water, as a new man, a new woman. Um, so Paul is talking about the, the daily life of a believer. And how each day is just a struggle with, you know, the sinful flesh. And, you know, we're, we're going to have bodies in the resurrection. They just won't be sinful anymore. The flesh won't be sinful. That'll be, well, I can't imagine that. Um, um, but it'll be wonderful. You know, so, you know, but in this life, it's a day-to-day -day struggle. And we're constantly being driven back to Christ. Not, oh, I'm going to try better tomorrow, which we should pray for. You know, but, you know, I, you know, someday soon I'm going to be able to stop all this. Well, yeah, it's when you die, but not until then. But in the meantime, you know, we keep running to Jesus, to our baptism, uh, to the promises that God makes us and what he actually gives us in our baptism as he gives us Jesus Christ. And we'll hear this come to a beautiful, beautiful conclusion tomorrow. Let's confess our faith now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell the third day. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Heavenly Father, grant us a good night's rest this evening that we may awake refreshed, having received your gifts this day to go about the work of the kingdom. Bless our work week, uh, that we may be fruitful in our employment, uh, whatever in our vocations, whatever that may be, and um, that we may be a blessing to our neighbors. Heavenly Father, do give you thanks for uh, the young men and women, the youth of our church and our surrounding churches. Uh, continue to bless them with your spirit, uphold them in these dark and latter days, that they may boldly confess. Guide us as uh, their mentors and uh, uh, those who are called, uh, good or bad, to uh, influence them. Uh, but we pray that we are called to, uh, we know we are called to influence them in a good way, but often our actions speak otherwise. But Heavenly Father, bless us too, that we may be good examples for these young men and women and teach, uh, grant us wisdom in what we teach them to prepare them for the questions and for the uh, issues that will arise uh, as they face a world that is increasingly hostile to the faith. I do give you thanks for the adult leaders that uh, help with these uh, men, these young men and women. Uh, they're a great blessing to these children and th these young men and women and to me. So uphold us all, and we do pray that our, our youth group would continue to bear fruit uh, and bring glory to your holy name. Heavenly Father, as always, we pray for those uh, who have requested our prayers. And tonight we pray for those who are crying out for healing, for our brother Dave, who remains hospitalized, my brother in Christ, Dave, and his wife, Sandy, who is improving uh, uh, for uh, uh, their family member, Dawn, uh, as she has to remain isolated from her family uh, because of this pestilence, uh, this disease, that you bless her with uh, peace and uh, uh, a good knowledge of not only how much she is loved by you, but from, from those around her, uh, the people of the church and her family. For our sister in Christ, Tammy, and her father, Phil, who's also our brother in Christ, for our brother in Christ, Dennis, and Willie, and all who are crying out to you. For my brothers in office, uh, um, uh, Dale, who is uh, now back in the United States, uh, who will uh, undergo treatment for the serious illness which he has, for our brother in Christ, Nicholas, and, and uh, Tony, uh, these are my brothers in the Holy Office. For dear friends of our congregation, for our sister in Christ, from a, a sister congregation, uh, Deb, uh, who is hospitalized. We pray you be with her. And um, for our brother in Christ, Ron, for Steve, for Robo, Megan, Brandon, Jim, Lorena, Samantha, Billy, Josiah, Jason, Jason. Heavenly Father, place your hand upon them. Heal them according to your gracious will. For those who are hospitalized, be with the nurses and doctors that they might be your instruments for their well-being. And may those places be, be um, places where they may be kept safe and under the watchful eye of trained uh, men and women that uh, your healing again might be administered. Be with the nurses and doctors who are working so hard that uh, you'd uphold them, and all the caregivers that uh, you'd uphold them, keep them healthy, and allow them to get the rest they need and uh, some time to just relax with those whom they love. Heavenly Father, all these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously got me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn number 611, Chief of Sinners Though I Be. Chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Die that I might live on high, live that I might never die. As the branches to the vine, I am and he is mine. There are five stanzas in that hymn. You can hear my voice. Uh, you know, a lot of talking, long day. Uh, all right, all a joy. 
And so I think my voice is about ready to say goodnight, so uh, I'll say goodnight as well. And with that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, and by his grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.